I'm not gonna lie. Today is one of those really scary days in the market where everything just selling off. And the only thing that successfully broke out is my face. Like, look at this, this is getting pretty bad. I think it's from both wearing the masks and uh, I've been eating a lot. What can I say? The only thing that can cheer me up in this kind of market condition is uh, eating good food. Okay, all jokes aside, even though the market is pretty red today and all the gappers seem to be selling off, uh, I still made two trades today, all on the long side, and they were both green trades. So first stock I traded was mRNA, Moderna. Uh, as you guys may know already, I have a love-hate relationship with this stock, uh, mostly hate. But if you look at the way this thing uh, kind of just tanked on Friday due to um, Merck's getting uh, positive data from one of the COVID studies, uh, the stock on Friday tanked from almost 358 uh, all the way down to a low of 225. Um, this is uh, the chart on Friday. You can see, yes, it did slowly recover near the end of the day back to 348, but we continued the gap down over the weekend. So the key level, I was looking more short bias pre-market when we were planning the stock. I was thinking, that, okay, if we bounce to that 330s area, which is the, the, the small resistance and support areas around the Friday's lows, then we can see a reversal to the downside. And you have downside to a daily chart around like 300 and to 310s. So that was gonna be the short side. But this thing started flushing down pre-market already. So basically it finished, it kind of like worked out the short D already and after that 310 started reclaiming at the open that's why I got in long on the starter size because remember if if the short side is a 330s resistance to short into and let's say supports at 300 310 to long the short already happened pre-market so that's the reason I was looking for the long side and also SSR is triggered um, so I got in a small starter I was using the five minute chart when um, I'm trading these stocks especially when market was uh, pretty volatile today um, for both Tesla and mRNA. I was trading on the five minute chart. So I got in long starter at uh, over the VWA reclaim and especially over 318s. So something to 320, small resistance. You can see the small pre-market uh, support area. And I'm not gonna lie, over here um, is where I got a little bit scared because market was very heavy. So after that 321's reject, this thing slammed down to 314's, which is pretty much my average. Actually, that's below my average. At that point, I have an average about um, 315's after all the ads on the way up. Cause I long starter added on um, the VWA reclaim and added some more here, 317's. That gave me an average about 315's. So I did trim some position due to fear and impatience. And a lot of times you kind of have to adapt with the market. The market was looking really heavy. So that's why I prefer to stay on the safer side and taking a smaller profit um, and then trimming down my risk. So I did sell some, trim some 316, 317s. And it's only after this thing cleared that 320s level we talked about the high of the data we added back to my long position. So 321's add um, after trimming position here, added back to my original size and I was selling on the way up. The target was around the 330s area. Remember 330s, that's the area I was looking to short the stock. So that it makes sense that this area up here would be a price target for the long side. So I was selling all of it into the breakout. You can see I didn't quite get 330s because I was pretty much all out around 328. And then I had small remaining. I just got I just got out. Um, yes, three missed three points for the upside. But you can see after this thing did pop to 330s and then reject it hard back to the 322s. So especially in the kind of like a choppy, downtrending market we're in, I always prefer to just take the smaller profit. Yes, the risk reward may not be, you know, one, two, three, but in this kind of market condition, you have to be conservative. That's my opinion. And uh, you know, it saved me well. You have to kind of take the small wins as opposed to if we were in a more stronger market, I, I think this thing could have a higher chance of going back to 340s, back to previous days, close. Um, because Myrna has done that in the past.
before. Uh, but for today, I'd rather be conservative. So that's why I took a smaller profit here. 3.28, I did go back for some small scalps. Uh, you can see not a good entry, 3.25, and then added 3.22s. Smaller size on the re-entries, that's just how I trade, especially in this market. The second stock I traded is Tesla on the long side. I prefer to buy the dip on this monster. Tesla is tricky because sometimes when it broke out in the past, if you look at the daily chart, the last two days, these two days when it just broke out, out, it never pulled back. That's really strong. But at the same time, today is one of those days it does pull back with the market. And when it pulls back from the $800 resistance, it dumped all the way to $788. So that's why Tesla, it's, it has like almost sometimes has a mind of its own. But today is definitely one that got pulled down by the market. So on Tesla, I was more long biased on the stock. Um, in the morning, I missed the whole dip. We were looking at the key level is 787. So if you look at this, the pre-market level and if you zoom out that's also the resistance from the last couple of days over here right you can see if this is from um, last Wednesday Thursday that's 787 so that's that's the reason that's gonna be the key level for the stock and then at the in the morning it never dipped there so I missed that and I missed it again over here when I was looking for a small pullback to the $800 psychological level for the bounce to long side uh, I didn't quite get that so that's why I left the thing alone and I was busy uh, watching my Moderna long position. So didn't get filled on over there and the market started pulling. Uh, when market dumps, Tesla just kind of dumps with it, especially after a huge gap up. These kind of stocks, Tesla has a tendency of filling the gap to the downside if it does gap up overnight, like the market. And with market selling off, it kind of probably gonna test the 780s downside. But I did get a small little bounce play on Tesla. Looking at that 8787, 788s area, the key level we talked about, I did get in small 789s, added some 787s, which turned out to be a small scalp. If we were in a normal market, where market's not just trending down and selling off, each bounce is sold into. I would have stayed a little bit longer and wait for this thing to reclaim VWAP and potentially test $800. Because we've seen Tesla do that in the past. But today is just one of those days where I'd rather take the small moves, like we said, um, for, for the same idea on Moderna and kind of protect my capital. Because Tesla is a very volatile stock. Um, so that's the reason I just got out. Turned out to be a very, very small winner. Moderna is still the bigger play for me today. So waiting for the actual most important support levels, uh, the key support is very important, especially in this kind of market condition. It's almost impossible to buy the breakout. Let's say if I bought the breakout at 8.06, a lot of times that breakout fails just because we're in a downtrending market. If we were in a more bullish market, then the breakouts have a higher tendency to hold and continue up higher. This is true, especially for the large cap stocks like Tesla and Moderna that has a history of following the overall market trend. So that's the reason, yes, I still buy the dip, but uh, I'm more cautious and waiting for the support areas um, too long instead of buying the morning breakouts. Now it's time for our Q and A's. Amy L is asking, Hey Shay, thanks for the video as always. Do you adjust your stop loss as you add into positions? So the answer is yes, especially in this kind of choppier market condition. So like we talked about mRNA, the reason I sold and adjusted my stops around here is because I added to the upside, added into my position. If I just had a starter down here at three tens, I probably wouldn't have stopped out here. And then I adjust my risk depending on what the price levels and what the price is, uh, price action is doing. And that's how I trade. There are some people who would prefer to just nail the bottom the entry at three tens and ride it all the way to up to their price target. That's fine too, but I do find that that doesn't suit my style, especially in when the market is choppier. A lot of times when I tried that in the past, um, the stock just end up turning into a break even trade or a small loss. So I prefer to add into the positions if I'm right and adjust stops on the way up. So whether it's I stop out break even or stop out with a smaller profit. And that's personally how I've been protecting my account capital uh, in the recent market conditions. The next question is from where is 
Ed. What we call today's CI move perfectly, $3 support he jumped in. Why do you think that would happen? It's not as uh, complex as many people think. It's just by observing what the stock has been doing in the past few days. Um, and I believe that was that was the comment from over here from this day on September 28th, where I talked about if the $3 area keeps on holding up, um, this thing could have a potential squeeze move to the upside. And it did. And the reason I said that is because I was watching how it trades, how it trades on this day. Um, the first time it broke above the $3 level. Yes, it had a, like a harsh sell off below $3, but really quickly reclaimed. And if you just kind of look at the intraday chart, each time it dips below that $3 level, it gets bought back up. So if you were looking at the time in sales and, and level two and how the price action of the candles was trading, whether it's uh, 15 minutes, five minutes or two minutes, it confirms the same thing. Thing. There's a buyer around $3 area. So that's the reason that's gonna be the key support for the next couple of days. So the next day, this thing dipped around $3 and ripped all the way to 480s. And then the same similar thing here. This day it didn't test $3. But similar thing here from last Friday, after it flushed down $3, reclaimed, this thing ripped uh, back up. So that's the reason a lot of times in trading, you're gonna learn more and make more money and be better with your executions if you spend t more time watching the chart and observing what the stocks are doing than to just busy pressing buy and sell buttons. When you are busy just looking for the next stock, the next hot stock to trade, you miss these little nuances and all the things that could help you in the future on the same stock. So that's why I prefer to just execute my trades now sit there and watch all the stocks that's you know has a high volume has a high range and even if i don't place a trade today a lot of times the next day is when the actual trade happens so keep that in mind especially if you are a new trader spend more time watching the market rather than just busy jumping in and out of trades um, you're gonna learn more this way and you're gonna progress and grow faster as a trader um, if you spend more time observing so hopefully that helps you guys out. Stay safe in the market and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.